Hey guys, how's it going? So we're continuing with our, with our paper, okay? So this time we have uh, this physical chemistry question, okay? So uh, it's very interesting. And uh, as always, if you haven't uh, subscribed yet, uh, it helps, uh, it encourages us to uh, keep going, okay? So if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. And uh, so the, we are going to continue with the, with the drill that we did previously, where I actually write down the, the answers, okay? So after, uh, writing how I would be how I'll answer the question then I'll explain uh, some of the aspects that we are supposed to uh, be aware of okay so I'll cover this part uh, very soon and then we just uh, discuss okay So yeah, that's it. Uh, so well, what you had to do here was um, you asked, you you told that chlorine gas has uh, two types of atoms as shown. So you have uh, this atom here, and then you have uh, this atom here. Okay. So you asked to state the name given to the two types of chlorine atoms. So these are called isotopes. Okay. So iso simply means um uh, same. Usually when you hear the the suff the prefix iso, it usually means uh, same. Okay. So these are uh, same in the sense that they are physical chemistry. It's identical. If you have um, uh, this this chlorine here, or if you have this chlorine here, uh, it would behave exactly identical in terms of the physical chemistry. Okay, how it reacts with um, other other molecules and compounds, it should be exactly identical. Why? Because the these the electrons that give the physical chemistry. So the electrons they are actually identical. How are they identical? Just because the atomic number, which is this this part here, the atomic number is the same. This is sort of like uh, a signature. If somebody comes to you, then they want to know your name, uh, your signature ID number. If some someone comes to you, then they want to identify you. They have to check your ID number. In the same sense, if you want to identify any element, you have to check what's called the um, atomic number. This is the number of protons, okay? So it's 17, 17. If the atomic number is a, is a certain number, you can actually know what element you're talking about, okay? These ones, they're called the masses. The masses, mass, mass is not very uh, important. So uh, the ratio that we, uh, we are not really concerned with the masses, we are actually concerned more with the, with the number of moles, okay? So the ratio of uh, a physical number, a physical count of atoms. That's what governs our physical chemistry, okay? So these ones, they're called isotopes in the sense that the masses, they are different. And this is uh, a big reason why chlorine has um, uh, this much, okay? So you hear uh, the, the mass number, it's 35.5, okay? So 35.5, why? Because um, it's what? Uh, because of the isotopes. There's isotopes that are present in, uh, we call it abundance. Abundance is the percentage. So this one will be a certain percentage. This one will be a certain percentage and then we have to weight, uh, weight it and then we, we get uh, an average, okay? So the average mass of chlorine on Earth might actually be different than the average mass of chlorine on the, on the moon, okay? So, but then that's not very important here. Uh, here you're asked to calculate the number of neutrons uh, in 35 uh, 7 chlorine here so what you have to know is to identify what are these numbers this one we had say that this is called the the atomic number so this is signified by z so z is equal to is equal to 17 this upper number here it's equal to number of neutrons which we denote by by n here plus plus number of uh, atomic number here okay so a number of protons equal to 35 then our atomic number already we have identified it as 17 so n is equal to so z goes that side so it's 35 minus z our z is equal to what is equal to 17 then we get 810 okay so this is how we calculate the number of the number of uh, neutrons we're going to move over to the next part and then we're going to do the same i'm going to write and then i'll explain to you afterwards so see you
So yeah, that's it. And now I have to explain this. So uh, chlorine reacts with sodium to form sodium chloride. So sodium chloride is turbo salt. Okay, so turbo salt. Salt means uh, something different in uh, in chemistry. Okay, so that's why we have to clarify that when you're talking of uh, sodium chloride, it's just turbo salt. Okay, sodium carbonate uh, or some some other. Uh, salts as well you can find them in in physical chemistry okay so to distinguish them we call this table salt so name the type of bonding in uh, sodium chloride one way to think of it is sodium it's a it's a metal and then chlorine it's a it's a non-metal so the bond that exists there it's called a unique bond okay so but then it's it's more complicated if you're doing chemistry then you might know the concept of um, electronegativity so that one better explains uh, uh, why it's ionic bond. But then for combined science, you just have to know that between a metal and a non-metal, you get uh, an ionic bond, okay? So, and then you asked you to draw uh, a dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in sodium chloride. This one, it's, uh, it's a little bit tough to uh, visualize, okay? But essentially, uh, sodium, you find it in the periodic table, you find it, sodium, the symbol is Na, so here, this part is um, sodium, okay, so it's Na. Uh, I haven't uh, loaded the, the periodic table, but if I had loaded it, you would have seen it. So according to the periodic table, sodium is in group one, okay. So group one simply means sodium has one electron in its outermost shell. This chlorine has um, um, seven electrons in its in its outermost shell, okay. So that means uh, for chlorine to have... Uh, what's called octate. Octate is um, uh, generally elements, they, they tend to be, atoms of elements, they tend to be more stable if they have a filled up outer shell. So the only way that they can do this is uh, if uh, uh, sodium, sodium gives uh, uh, one of its electron, its outermost electron. And these ones, these electrons that you're seeing, they are from the, from the inner, uh, they are from the, from the inner, uh, shell electron shell okay so we have uh initially it was like this and uh sodium had had one here okay so this one here is has been taken by by chlorine okay so that's essentially what's happening there so to distinguish them we use uh, what's we, we, which we, we use this notation it's called the uh lewis lewis structure So you can say Lewis dot and cross structure. Okay, so the dots and the cross crosses that we use them to distinguish to know where the electrons are coming from. So for example, here chlorine, chlorine has e, uh, the dots. Okay, so the circles here, and then uh, this one it didn't belong initially to chlorine. It was actually uh, something that belonged to to sodium. Okay, so chlorine gained an electron here if it gains an electron that means it it's it's negative by by one more so that's why we put this negative here and this one is positive as in uh, now the number of protons they are more by one since um, uh it was neutral at first but then uh, it lost an electron so now it's more positive okay so it's positive by one like this so that's 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 how you 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 uh, go about it and some sometimes let's say for magnesium chloride Magnesium chloride would be like this. Okay, so it'd be like this. So you actually have to put two here on uh, on on the on the chloride here since you have two here. Okay, so each chloride will be just just like this because each one will be receiving uh, a single electron. Okay, so that's something that you should uh, uh, be careful with. So state uh, in two physical properties of sodium chloride. Okay, so. Here the buzzword is physical physical properties. Physical properties it means uh, some uh, uh, properties that don't have to do with the physical chemistry with the with the chemistry of the of the compound. So they don't have to do with the electrons or anything like that. They are just physical physical. It means you can test them by physical means. So for example, boiling something it's a physical process. You won't change. Uh, water if you boil it you just change the, the state okay so here I by boiling point it's a it's one physical property high melting point is also uh, a physical property and uh, you have a uh, uh, neutral neutral pH okay so a uh, neutral pH is in uh, since it's a salt this one it's uh, if you put it in water and then 
uh, test the, the pH, it would uh, give a neutral or seven, okay? So pH of seven here. Yeah. Conducts electricity when it's uh, in solution. Yeah, it's true for, for most ionic uh, compounds, okay? And uh, that's why we use them as electrolytes or sometimes we use them in uh, electrolytic cells, okay? So the other one is that it's, it's a white crystal. You just uh, choose whichever is um, is um, easy to remember here. But then some of these, they are actually common for for all ionic uh, compounds, okay? So at least for most ionic compounds. So that's what you're supposed to uh, look uh, look forward to. So yeah, that's it for, for this part and uh, I'll catch you in the uh, next video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I advise you to um, make sure you share, like and subscribe. You both out.